This is our ETF strategy that can actually help you beat the market. I used to believe, like most people, that you can't beat the market unless you buy individual stocks. We always look at all the great investors out there and they've always been individual stock pickers. But that's likely incorrect. You can absolutely beat the market with low cost ETFs and I'm gonna show you how right now. So in this video, we will discuss a two fund ETF portfolio that has the potential to beat the market. We'll go over what those two funds are, how to use them in your portfolio, and finally, do a deeper dive into the numbers. But stick with us throughout this entire video because at the end, I'm gonna drop my personal step-by-step -step plan for what I think you should do and how you should execute this exact plan. So first, from Vanguard's own website, the Vanguard 500 Index Fund ETF, which is the ticker symbol VOO, tracks the S&P 500, which is the 500 largest companies in the US. As it stands, the top five holdings for VOO are Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, Amazon, and Google. Pretty nice, right? So the great part about VOO is that you not only become part owner of the top 500 companies in the US, but you pay extremely minute management fees on the fund. The fund manager is only making moves in accordance with the S&P, making it a passively managed fund that charges just 0.03% in fees. How low is that? For every $10,000 you invest in that fund, the total fees are a mere $3 per year. Think about that, $3 on 10,000, when the average mutual fund is gonna charge you between 100 and $200 a year for that exact same 10,000 and will not beat the market over long periods of time. I've said this a thousand times, Warren Buffett says it, every great investor I have heard says this. If you wanna match the market, not pay a lot of fees to a financial planner or some mutual fund, that'll only eat away at your returns, invest in a low cost ETF like VOO or SPY. Both of these have practically inconsequential fees and they're going to match the market and diversify you into the 500 biggest companies in the country. And on top of that, you don't need to worry about what companies to own, what companies are entering, it does it automatically for you. Now, with that said, there is a way to even get above that kind of return over the long run that doesn't involve individual stocks because you'd only match the market if you invested in VOO alone. So guys, just like 2000, I think we're in a tech driven bubble right now. We have all time highs on these high flying tech companies. First it was EVs, Bitcoin's been involved. It was all these other things. Now we're in the AI bubble. NFTs we've seen go down to zero. And this has led to some insane valuations, especially on large cap companies. And these valuations are probably going to continue for a little bit longer. How long? No clue. And anyone who says otherwise has no clue. But my guess is that the result in the tech world will be somewhere along the lines of what happened in the dot-com bust. Will it be an 83% drop like we had the NASDAQ back in 2000? I have no idea. Probably not. Because companies today in the tech world are making a lot more money and they're not as insanely overpriced on the high end as they were back then. But still, it could fall significantly, maybe 50% or more. Probably at some point. But when? I have no idea. So here's where you can take advantage of this potential bubble. Invest in the second ETF of the two fund portfolio. Now, when I say take advantage of it, I'm not meaning buy it today. The tech heavy NASDAQ is currently down about 8% from its all time high. But the key here is if you're able to buy the NASDAQ in the Invesco QQQ ETF, which is the ticker symbol QQQ, which is the top 100 companies in NASDAQ, if you're able to buy that at reasonable levels, you'll probably do well. Why? Well, tech companies that tend to have really high gross margins, really high profit margins, and more importantly, they're able to reinvest at high rates of return for long periods of time. This isn't the old days of owning a fact manufacturing plant that took a lot of money and generated small returns. They're able to reinvest and get much, much higher levels of profit, which will drive their profit up even higher. That's how you compound to much higher rates of return. Now, what I'm saying here is I don't want you to market time. That's not going to work. What I'm waiting for is more reasonable valuation levels. So guys, here is the chart comparing it to total return, comparing it to the S&P 500. If you bought QQQ on January 1st, 2020, this is the chart. 
It's now barely beating the S&P 500 in total return. And it took until COVID, a little bit after COVID, to surpass it, okay? So all along this way, that NASDAQ 100 was trailing the market. But let me just change one thing here. Let me go backwards one year to January 1st, 1999 and show you that chart. Just back one year, look at the total return now. 780% versus 454% the S&P. Why? Because we had this big tech bubble right there. Look at how much QQQ skyrocketed. Now, if you bought here at the top, you probably you didn't see your return even out for a long time. That sucks. And that should be your concern. However, remember, what I'm trying to sit there and say is just wait for reasonable levels of valuation. Here's the key. This was unreasonable. This was also unreasonable. Remember, markets will go back and forth like a pendulum. It'll go from massively euphoric to completely irrational on the other side. Irrational on the high side, irrational on the low side. That's what makes averages. And what I'm asking you to do is just be a little bit patient. Now, let me show you the returns here. The annualized return of QQQ from January 1st, 1999 is 9.2% total return. S&P 500 is 7.2%. So a, st- so a solid 2% per year beat. The previous one? They were both at 6.9 and 6.8% from January 1st, 2020. Now, let me show you if you were smart enough to invest at the bottom of QQQ. Now, again, that's completely irrational. But what I'm asking you to do, though, is start buying before then when it's still coming down. Look at this return. 1,400% on QQQ versus 600% on the NASDAQ from June 1st, 2003. And look. It was pretty much even up until the financial crisis and then tech started to really take off here. You need to dollar cost average and continue to do so. My guess is that as these top 100 companies are able to compound that profit and reinvest and generate higher returns, that if you pay a reasonable price for them, you'll really be able to get outsized returns. If you bought at the right times, you absolutely crushed the S&P 500. And you'll also see the chart that if you paid a poor price, it took 15 or 20 years for the QQQ to actually surpass S&P 500. So remember, I'm not telling you to eliminate SPY or VOO. What I'm telling you to do is, is own these together. In other videos in the past, I've told people, instead of betting on an individual company, bet on a sector. If you think a sector is beaten down, bet on that sector. What I'm asking you to do is do that same thing with QQQ. I think it's too early to start on an investment in QQQ today, just based on how overvalued the top 100 NASDAQ companies are, in my opinion. But if you wait for more reasonable levels and then dollar cost average for the rest of time, you're likely to do well. Now, remember, the reason I like tech stocks is they're able to reinvest at higher rates of return and get much higher profit. That is the key as to why I believe if you pay a reasonable price for tech companies, that you can absolutely get higher returns and also why tech companies deserve higher valuations than your garden variety factory business. Let me give you an example. Let's say there are two companies. One's a tech company that makes a billion a year. One's a factory business that makes a billion a year. Okay, they both make the same amount of money, but the tech company has much higher margins and can grow their revenue at faster rates than the factory company. Which one would you pay more money for? Of course, the tech company. And that's how the stock market has shifted over the last few decades. Long gone are the days of companies like factories that build factories that have these very big capital intensity businesses in order to make money. Now you have companies that can just sit there and generate high margins, sell a product, get 80 cents going, 80% of it going to pre-tax profit, and then reinvest it into growth. So guys, adding QQQ to your portfolio can help generate excess returns of being the market, but by how much? Well, not a ton. You're not gonna all of a sudden be generating 5% more than the market. Also, I'm not telling you to boo 50-50. So if you put 10, 15, 20% of your money in QQQ, even on that chart where you're beating by by 4%, 14.2 versus 9.9, you're only adding about a percent more to your portfolio. But guess what? That's huge numbers. In our retirement calculator, you can see how much 1% difference means over a lifetime. It is a big deal. But again, you're not going to buy at the bottom. Can your 15 or 20% of your portfolio beat by a few percent and then keep growing from there? Absolutely. But remember, the hard part in all of this 
is being okay buying as everything goes lower. Because guess what? As things go lower and the market sentiment shifts, we will go more irrationally even to the low side. I want everybody also remember, the reason this is a great idea is, as time goes on, tech companies change. First, it was locomotion. Then it was cars. Then it was airplanes. Then it was radios. Then it was TVs. Then it was um, computers. Then it was the internet. Then it was all these other things that have happened. Now we're in AI. We had electric vehicles. We had chips. It always changes, but it's always still the tech of that generation. So when you buy the ETF, you don't need to worry about which company's in there, which is the next. It's going to automatically happen for you. The tech of today is not the blue chips of today. But the the tech of 30 years ago and 20 years ago are the blue chips today. The tech of today will be the blue chips of tomorrow. And there'll be a totally new tech 20 years from now when your kids will be saying, dad, it's not like AI. AI was so obvious. Come on, dad. It's not 2023, you loser. That's going to happen. It always happens that way. 23 years ago, it was dot coms. And guess how obvious the dot com and the internet is now that we look back on it. It clearly changed the world, and we actually knew that back then, but people just overpaid. So again, adding this one ETF to your portfolio can make a difference in adding up to a lot of money down the road, especially the younger you are. So ultimately, am I in favor of this? Absolutely. I believe in ETFs, and I believe in taking specific bets with ETF, and you can absolutely gain what's called alpha, returns in excess of the market, by being very strategic about your ETF buying. But remember... It's all about that inner peace you have to have, being able to dollar cost average even as stocks go down and worse yet, as the news changes. That's the big thing. So guys, thank you very much for sticking around all the way to the end. If you got value out of this, please consider hitting the like button on the video. And if you wanna do a deeper dive into VOO, the S&P 500 ETF, click this video here and we'll see you on the next one.